Paper Mario, one of my favorite video game franchises. I have played every single game in the series, and today I thought, why don't I rank them in order, from least to best? Before we get started with the list, I just wanted to ask you to subscribe. We're almost to 100 subscribers. Now, on with the video. Now, I don't really dislike most of the Paper Mario games. I think each game has a decent number of positive things about them. I can sit down and have a fun time replaying any of these titles. Well, except... This game is bad. I'm sure you weren't prepared for that statement. Not only is this game so awfully boring, but it also pretends to be an alright game for the first 30 minutes to an hour of gameplay. I had an enjoyable time finding toads and exploring around Deckleburg, but after a few levels in World 1, it starts to feel so repetitive. Almost every level is just you going from the start to end of it. There are ever so little twists to the gameplay that I start to feel myself fall asleep. There is so little that I remember from this game. When I first played this game as a kid, I got up to World 2 before I got stuck in the stupid Yoshi Sphinx. The combat in this game is so boring and bad, like I don't mind it for the first couple of hours, but after that it gets so repetitive and tedious. Like, why should I waste my time and stickers on enemies that don't even give me anything? Not even any experience points to help me level up my attack power or health points. There got to be a point where I just started to avoid the enemies. Their bosses are also really bad. In almost every boss, you need a specific special sticker of a day-to-day -day item, but tough luck if you don't have it on you, or if you haven't turned into a sticker yet, because that means you have to leave the area and get that specific item sticker you need. But if you're a stupid kid and don't know what specific sticker you need, then good luck on just guessing and wasting special stickers trying to figure out which one you need. There is no question about it. It is a no-brainer that this game is on the bottom of the list. I later 100%ed this game, but this isn't the time to talk about my poor life decisions. Even the music in this game is kind of mid. I can think of little to any positive things to say about this game. I guess one of them could be that it eventually ends. I think some of the other games on this list you can defend at least have a few positive attributes, but there isn't a single reason why I think you should make a good case for this game. You may disagree with some selections on this list, but we all know that this game deserves to be at the bottom of it all. Now, Paper Mario Color Splash is a game I almost feel sorry for. Coming out after Sticker Star made it feel like that this game was going to be just as bad. Sure, this game may have the same type of level structure and battle system, but it is definitely a lot better. It may not be amazing or that good of a game, but it still has a lot of charm and fun times. It's really satisfying to paint empty spots with your hammer to try to aim for 100% on each level. Again, each level may have a start to end gameplay of Sticker Star, but the difference is that the levels are actually fun and unique than just grass, desert, forest, snow, and beach. There are actual themes to most of all the levels that make them feel different from the last. The music even! The music in this game is actually really good. The battle theme has to definitely be up there for some of the catchiest battle themes in the history of battle themes. Though some of my problems with Sticker Star also fall into this game. Like the battle system isn't really any better, and the day-to-day -day items are back that make it frustrating for boss fights. There's also the other problem where all the toads in this game are all the same, but if you're a fellow Paper Mario fan, at this point, you're used to it. Again, this may not be the strongest Paper Mario game, but it is at least a fun time. At this point in my list, I have two games where I'm not sure which one is better or not. I find myself constantly switching them around with each other. But what I believe in the moment is that Paper Mario the Origami King is number 4 on this list. This game might be the most decisive in the Paper Mario franchise. It sparked a war between fans. The modern Paper Mario fans claiming that the only reason people liked the old Paper Mario games was for nostalgia, while the old Paper Mario fans claim that the modern Paper Mario games are really stupid and bad. Which side am I on? I like all of the Paper Mario games. Well, except for that one. I personally really like the Origami King. The more open world gameplay is really fun, just exploring around the world, looking for hidden toes and treasures to find. Even the fun painting system from Color Splash kind of returns. Instead here we're using confetti to cover up the holes in the world. The story in this game might not be anything to write home about, but it does have some interesting moments with Toad Hate, with the main bad guy really despising the Toad species. The music in this Paper Mario game slaps yet again, having some of my favorite songs in the entire franchise. Though, the biggest problem with this game is the battle system. It's not anything like Sticker Star or Color Splash. I would say I had a better time with it than other people, but I do have to agree that it also gets repetitive after a certain amount of time. 
It's really cool how the battles in this game are puzzles, where you have to line up enemies properly for maximum damage, but there are only so many configurations before you start getting repeats. My ideal next new Paper Mario game would of course have the old battling system of the first two Paper Mario games, but would also have the world exploration of the Origami King, because I do believe at the end of the day that the Origami King is a really good game, one of my top 10 Switch games. What I was talking about before, how I find myself switching around two games in the series, the reason for that being what the Origami King lacks in unique characters and story, Super Paper Mario makes up for. While what Super Paper Mario lacks in fun gameplay, the Origami King makes up for it. Not saying that the gameplay in Super Paper Mario isn't fun or interesting, it's just really different. Like the gameplay of controlling Paper Mario usually stays the same across every game, but in Super Paper Mario it's at its most different being a 2D side-scroller now. Well, kinda, because the gimmick in this game is that you can switch to 3D on the fly. This game is so wild with its concepts that you will never get bored with it. Like there is literally a part in the game where you have a dating sim between a weird lizard geek who's obsessed with Peach, while Peach wants nothing to do with him. And if that wasn't enough, you literally die and go to the afterlife, where it's called World Minus One, being a reference to the Minus World glitch from the original Super Mario Brothers. That isn't even all of the wacky things about this game. The story in this game is also the biggest it has ever been in this Paper Mario series, being a bunch of twists and turns along your travels. The music in this game being a pretty good too. Maybe not as good as the Origami King, but it has a few absolute hits. This game is consistently entertaining and fun the entire time through. The original Paper Mario, the game that started everything, for the better and the worse. To be honest, there isn't much to say about this game. The combat is really good, being the old style Paper Mario combat we have all come to learn and love, the world and characters being unique and entertaining, and the music being pretty good. There's a cool trick in the game where you can do a spin dash move that helps you out a lot with traversal. The only real nitpick I would have for this game being that the story isn't anything to write home about, being that Bowser stole the thing, go get the several other things, and save Peach. But with it being the first game in the franchise, I don't really blame it for that. Honestly, it's just a well-rounded good game. The reason why I don't have a lot to say on it is because the game that came out after this one made everything that made this game good even better. From the characters, world building, story, and music, this next game improved on everything from the original and made one of my favorite games of all time. This is it. The game you all knew would be in the number one spot. You all knew because it's one of the greats. When I got this game for my 13th birthday, I fell in love with it. The world building, the unique and interesting characters, the amazing soundtrack, and the story. From there on, I knew that this game would be my favorite game of all time. It also just holds a special place in my heart. I love every single one of the partners. Each one has something interesting about them. From Goombella to Vivian, they all have unique personalities. Each chapter never feels the same from the last. From the mystical boggly woods to the creepy atmosphere of Twilight Town. I've replayed this game countless times. And now thanks to Nintendo finally giving us the remake we've always wanted, I get to play it again. I remember back when the Nintendo Switch first released, I would imagine how cool it would be if we get a remake of my favorite game of all time, being this one. And now at the end of the Switch's life, we finally got it. I know I haven't said much about the game itself, but if you don't know what makes this game so special, then you need to go play it for yourself. And thanks to the remake, you finally can. As a celebration for this wonderful game coming out soon, please subscribe and give a like to this video. I want to make more videos about Paper Mario and its new remake. On your way down there, please tell me your personal list of the Paper Mario games. And until next time, stay chill.